Jesus. Let's see your hands. Put your hands up. Hands up now. Put your hands up. Do you understand? Put your goddamn hands up. Hands up. Don't, uh -uh. Don't. <clears throat> okay, we got to back up because I uh, had a microphone issue <laughs> all the way to the beginning. Um, yeah. So, anyway, we'll we'll get that fixed here shortly. Um, let me go and bring this up. Make your sound. Yeah. yeah. So, let's start over here. 1017 concealed carry. Spots left. 111 concealed carry, spots left. 1115 concealed carry, spots left. 1024 basic rifle and carbine. 1025 rifle instructor. Also, uh, this Sunday, 1011 is the rimfire sniper shoot. Um, gonna have a lot of fun everybody's welcome it's one to four at the club so uh, hopefully everybody makes it down and uh, makes it past the the sound problem that we had um, so that's backing up to what we missed before <clears throat> all right so we're gonna start this, this video back over again a little bit um, this is the most important election. And this is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, backstory on this video. Part of our show title is How Close is Too Close with a Knife? Uh, personally, I think 35 to 45 feet is probably too close for somebody who's determined because of the speed disadvantage to move laterally or um, finding cover. You have to use your brain to kind of defeat that attack, especially in an open area. Um, I think probably general public looks at this 21 foot rule that's that's out there as a rule and not a suggestion. Yeah, we're gonna, it's actually too, not enough. Yeah, 21 feet is, is not enough. So we're gonna take a look at this and then um, kind of go through it here. Hey, put your hands up. My man, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Let's see your hands. Put your hands up. Hands up now. Put your hands up, you understand? Hands up. Don't, uh uh. Don't. Don't you dare. Put your hands up. He's going to get his ass. Put your, hand. Put your hands up. to unpack in in the first what minute and a half yeah. so a minute and a half into this video um, the man was tased told to drop the knife the officer was stabbed twice and the man was shot to the ground um, if we go back a little bit here into this area what I want you to notice is 
how far away this guy is. That's about 20 feet. <clears throat> it's about 20 feet. Um, the other thing is, he's been hit with a taser. Yeah. And gets back up from the taser. Yeah. And successfully closes this distance while she's trying to move straight backwards, which she should have been moving laterally. Um, but the other thing I want you to notice is the distance between this officer and the man, right? He's, he's got his firearm out. So not only was this man able to defeat the officer running a taser at that distance, he was able to defeat the officer with his firearm already out. And if we look at this, we're gonna kind of move forward through this a little bit. Drop it, God damn it. And there's some pretty foul language. He comes forward. Look at the time this displacement between what happens here. So if we go back here just a little bit, see if I can get a good picture. We can see the knife right here. Mm -hmm. Look how close the officer is. Yep. Um, so here's the thing, and I don't know, I originally saw this from a different angle. Okay, here it is. Here's the, from the other officer's angle. Um, we take a look at this. He goes down. His firearm is, is already out. You can see it in the video here. He gets up. Lady officer starts moving backwards. Right? And the third officer, along with the second officer, intervenes. Okay, now what, what I'm trying to get to here is look at the angle of the shot from the third officer. Look how close yeah. he is to this woman. Yeah, right? he, if he hadn't taken the shot, she'd, she'd have taken another, another couple, of, a couple of strikes from that knife. And the thing is, um, we kind of really hammer on on first round, second round, on accuracy. Um, we look at this situation, and most of us aren't going to be put in this exact situation, but uh, just a little bit of sight deviation from right. on this second officer's firearm, and and he's hitting his one of his coworkers. Right. Uh, so, I mean, accuracy is is literally that important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, you can tell how many rounds that guy took before he got he went down. Too. Yeah, you know, he was hanging on to her arm. She couldn't yeah. go anywhere. She could. He so. got end up getting a hold of her. Now, yeah. Um, <clears throat> in this world of, you know, police shoot too many people and things like that. In in my had I been in this guy's shoes or the other guy's shoes, um, I would open fire on him before that. Yeah. I, I yeah, probably no. would have opened fire on him while he was charging through the taser mm -hmm. with the knife. Right. Um, just knowing the fact that somebody going, it, it, even at a brisk walking pace, um, doesn't really... Yeah, because once he gets close to her, you can't take the shot. You know, exactly. Until he, she gets a little bit of distance between her and the, the criminal there. So, and we see her later on in the video. She wasn't seriously injured, um, but uh, you know, I'm sure she went to the hospital. I'm sure she's not going to be having a good day the following day after this. Mm -hmm. um, what this was, what uh, nine five twenty twenty, and. Uh, I didn't go, I do believe this was uh, Indiana or in Illinois somewhere. It wasn't that far away, but this just goes to show you 
the distances in which you you need to practice this even just this one situation covered longer distances which I don't know why the officer didn't take the shot sooner I don't know whether it wasn't comfortable with that distance or or what but it also shows you close distances it shows you the need for for an accuracy standard mm -hmm. and to hold yourself to a, a really high accuracy standard it also shows that the number of follow-up shots required yeah um not like the movies they no the, down and the, the particular attacker isn't gonna just you know vaporize in, mm -hmm. into a million different pieces no. on the first two or three shots i mean no. i didn't i didn't slow it down and count but i'm guessing 10 to 15 oh, shots yeah. easy and it yeah. looks like I, I looked in the background of of the video to see if I could see any dirt splashes or anything like that and I didn't see any yeah. I didn't see any grass and it's it's pretty it's lit enough back here so that you would see something yeah. um, if yeah. if they did a, a lot of messing so it looks like most of those shots landed now the perpetrator did expire on scene um, which I don't really feel bad for the guy considering uh, he decided he was going to try and and stab this woman with a knife repeatedly, um, but it, that this is this is a, a big a big dose of learning right here, and uh, it's all done in uh, like I say a, about a minute and a half from walking up to uh, shots fired on scene is a minute. That's not a lot of a time to make rational and informed decisions yeah. on. Well, and everybody um, thinks that the, the body, the soft body armor they wear will, will stop a knife. No. It won't. Well, no. the other thing is, if you notice, he was he was actually intent on getting underneath, underneath. Yeah. of the armor. Yep. Um, he knew that. He, he had right. intention in his, um, yeah. in his mind. So, yep. that, there's just, a, there's a ton of stuff in a real small package with this video, and it's, it's pretty... It's a pretty intense video, and um, it just it shows us what the type of things that not only these guys go through, but the type of things that we may end up, you know, running into in our lives, and what what's going to be required of us um, to get out of it to, alive. Yeah, to get out of it, and, and we also like to say you don't you don't really rise to the occasion. Generally, you will fall to your lowest level. Um, mm -hmm we see that time and time again but uh it just you know this is this kind of stuff is is uh it's just so important and yes. you got people around even in the civilian side of this there's a, a ton of risks involved and you know being proficient is and knowing a few tactics and doing some practice and, and keeping current and you know staying sharp with your skills is just it's it's a good risk mitigation technique yeah and then, then you and then you introduce the low light so well certainly you know you, you you're at you know so many different factors in there that it's hard to you know you have to be on on point with your accuracy to be to be successful. Oh yeah, I mean it's not. So. <clears throat> no. uh, Rick Smith, I don't, um, I don't know about mental issues. Um, I, I probably believe that at minimum there was some drug issues. I don't know about uh, um, about mental issues, uh, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did. Uh, they and also they did. They did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. um, looks like you know if you continue to watch that video, uh, there's a there's a ton of things that they did right, um, and we can sit and critique all we want to. Um, And we don't want to turn that into some kind of victim blaming or something like that. But um, 
that's what they deal with every day. Yeah. So. Um, we we kind of do this so that they can learn. Chicago. So if anybody wants to go and, and check out the entire 13 minute video, it's it's uh it's good learning, but it's kind of boring. After the meat and potatoes of the action. Mm -hmm. so. Next thing we got up and uh, this is this has been the case. This is a Washington examiner. Their headline is women and minorities rush to get concealed carry permits are up 34%. Um, we brought this kind of stuff up. This is from the 6th of October 2020. We've kind of brought this stuff up right along. Uh, if you extend, attend one of our instructor classes, you'll, we talk extensively about, you know, uh, different learning techniques and things like that um, to, to fit a wide demographic of people. We've been seeing actually women uh, outnumbering men in most of our training classes for Maybe two years two years yeah at least two years two years three years something like that yeah. so these guys are like behind the time <laughs> yeah they're a day late and a dollar short on this yeah um now there's some cool stats in this thing it says uh uh, permits to carry concealed guns has surged 34% in the past four years, and I think I think that's probably a little low, um, but we won't argue with their stat at the moment. John Lott's Crime Prevention Research Center revealed there are 19.48 million permit holders, 820,000 more than 2019, which uh, a good number, but um, I'd like to see more of these take a little bit more than their basic concealed carry class. Um, he found that women and minorities are leading the new applications. Permits for women and minorities continue to increase at a much faster rate than for either men or whites, he said. Finding parallel reports from gun stores that women and minorities are buying weapons and signing up for concealed carry classes at a brisk pace. And we've been talking about this for two and a half, three years, that this is the demographic that's... That traditionally hasn't had one. Yeah, that's, this is the demographic that we're seeing. Uh, Mr. Lott said the growth has slowed recently as states have curbed issuing permits due to cutbacks from the coronavirus crisis. And, and now they're starting to open back up again. Um, Cam Ed Edwards from the Bering Arms site said that with requests for their permits surging, coronavirus mitigation efforts, limiting office work lines and wait times to get one have also increased. He noted in Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, applicants have to wait until March to get a concealed carry license. More than 9% of the 209 million adults in the United States have a permit to carry. The number of people who carry concealed weapon is likely much higher because several states don't require permits. Um, Arizona, West Virginia, uh, Montana, I think I know them. No, Pennsylvania still got a permit. They, they still have a permit. According to last report, 17 states no longer provide data on all the people who are legally carrying a concealed handgun because people in those states no longer need a permit to carry. So, there you go. Other highlights, Alabama has the highest concealed carry rate at 28.5. Indiana is second with 18.7. Five states have over a million permit holders. Uh, as the number of permits have gone up, violent crime has decreased slightly. Um, and if you, you've been in this game for any length of time, you realize that Florida in 1994 finally gave up the ghost on gun control and uh, was actually one of the first to come up with a shall issue concealed carry permit scheme because the violent crime was so rampant mm -hmm. in the Miami area. And they said, fine, we had enough, we'll let you people shoot back legally. And the uh, problem kind of took care of itself because, you know, criminals are... They're, they they're predators. They're, they're yeah, after yeah. the easy target. When people start shooting back, they decide that it's not worth their time anymore. So, 
Which is here to say the least, right? <clears throat> we got another cool story here, and uh, uh, GOA files an FEC complaint against Facebook and AFP fact check and Kamala Harris for violations of campaign finance laws. Um, now this has all got to do with their fact checker thing that, that shows up on your article that says, oh, this is false, blah, blah, blah. Well, skipping through the article, examples of erroneous fact checks were two articles concerning VP candidate Kamala Harris's record on the Second Amendment. Both articles written by Cam Edwards and GOA's own Rachel Malone correctly demonstrated Harris's anti-gun record, but were rated false by Facebook, which used the foreign AFP as its source. Um, part of the complaint Facebook has recruited an agent of European government to control which messages about U.S. elections may be heard and which should be suppressed. Based on its favorite status within Facebook, AFP Fact Check has been given access to the Facebook site along with unilateral powers to declare information it opposes to be false news. That's the thing. Essentially, Facebook has decided that on a platform which they tout freedom of speech yeah. to give an agency of a European, European government full access to restrict the speech of people that it deems unworthy. Yeah, and it, um, I'm sure it's one of the ways they can get around censorship. Oh, I'm by, sure. By them, you know, of themselves, you know. Um, they, wow. They're not doing it, you know. Somebody else is doing it. Well, this goes on to say, uh, fact check have provided valuable service for the political campaign of vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris and Facebook employees have used corporate time and resources to target and remove political speech critical to their favored candidate because such speech has been deemed harmful to that candidate all for the purpose of influencing the 2020 presidential election because Facebook and AFP fact check are corporations they are prohibited from providing this service to the campaign free of charge or for less than they should normally charge. Therefore, these services constitute a prohibited corporate in-kind contribution to the Harris campaign. So, the, the thing about it is, you know, we've spent the last, I don't know how many years dealing with this Russia collusion garbage. What about the French collusion? I mean, it's right there in front of us. It's not a secret. They censored online articles that were factual and then this, you know, through a European government with an outside corporation. So, I mean, they should be responsible for that. So the, the main question that I have is, the damage is already done, how do they repair it? Yeah. I don't know, but it is a, an issue. <clears throat> The other thing we got going on here is uh, there's this company called Q and they make a honey badger pistol with a arm brace attached to it. It's much like the adjustable SIG braces. The ATF has now randomly and arbitrarily decided that the honey badger is a short barreled rifle, yet nobody can figure out why they changed their mind. Uh, Q announced today that it was issued a cease and desist by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. The ATF's letter notified Q that the Honey Badger pistol is now considered a short barrel rifle and ordered them to immediately cease production of the firearm unless it's registered on ATF Form 2 declaring their manufacturing NFA weapon. Now, I did read another article today that accuses <clears throat> a couple of rogue ATF management officials. Um, of arbitrarily classifying this as a short barrel rifle to hurt the current administration's re-election campaigns because they know how heavily weighted uh, his support group is in the gun owning community. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether any of that is true or not. I guess time will tell. <clears throat> but the thing is the ATF has not provided um, 
At this time, Q has not received any definitive guidance from the ATF. In the meantime, Q encourages possessors of honey badger pistol to take these proactive measures. Remove the barreled upper receiver from the lower, dedicated as a replacement for another AR style pistol or registered short barrel rifle, or if you don't possess an AR style pistol or registered short barrel rifle, remove the barrel upper receiver from the lower receiver and temporarily transfer it out of your possession by, for example, transferring it to the dominion and control of another individual. Once this step is complete, you may file an ATF Form 1 to register the lower as a short barrel rifle. Upon Form 1 approval, the firearm may be reassembled. <coughs> um, the thing is, Q came out and said that anybody who wants to file SBR paperwork, which is the Form 1, they will pay the $200 tax stamp. Hmm. So it is of no financial consequence for you to file your Form 1 for your SBR. <coughs> um, It says a properly registered fire manufacturer form two required by contact ATF to develop a plan for addressing those firearms early just repeated no later in August 17, 2020. Provide a sample of the sugar weasel and mini fix firearms to ATF for an official classification no longer in August 17th. Um, and then the NFA levies a $200 tax on each one. <clears throat> Based on the product description on your website, ATF believes these firearms are designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder and may be classified as short barrel rifle under the GCA and NFA. Please note, FATD makes firearm classification based on a physical sample of firearms as received and is not an official classification. So, hmm. it is clearly an arm brace. Yeah. Um, I think where they're running into issues is it's an adjustable arm brace. Right. And the ATF has decided that um, it is mm -hmm. arbitrarily putting this out to harm not only the company but the gun owning community and the uh, re-election of our current administration. So this is why voting matters and elections have consequences. <clears throat> um, If you attend one of our classes, we talk quite heavily about um, laws and self-defense and what you need to legally prepare yourself for defending yourself with a firearm. We also have somebody come in, U.S. Law Shield. Um, speaking of which, there's a 22nd of October, there is a Law Shield seminar at the Sportsman's Club. Um, we need to get 25 people so that we can have that. So. If you're interested in it, head on to our Facebook page and get signed up. Um, in any event, we talk about having some type of insurance or plan to deal with in the event that you have to defend yourself with a firearm, that you, you have some type of backup plan. Well, this guy this Florida man released from jail after two years when a judge ruled shooting justified under the stand your ground law. Um, Mr. James would have believed that the use of deadly force was necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm. Mr. James, uh, St. Lucie County Circuit Judge Will Roby stated, the state has failed to prove that Mr. James has no objectively reasonable basis to use deadly force against Mr. McMiller at any time during their fateful encounter. And with that, as reported by T.C. Palm, Judge Roby dismissed all charges against Jason Dames, who had been sitting in jail cell for two years after the 2018 shooting. Dames was attacked by Jesse McMiller, a man he didn't know, in a restaurant. Dames is blind in one eye and has a shunt in his head, which makes him particularly vulnerable to injury. Dames was punched repeatedly and had been knocked to the ground before he shot McMiller, who later died in the hospital. Dames was not in any way the person who initially provoked the use of force against him. Dames was released from jail where he remained all this time pending $750,000 worth of bail. The judge ruled the state failed to make the case that Roby's use of deadly force wasn't justified given the circumstances. A reasonable and prudent person in the same position as Mr. Dames would have believed that the use of deadly force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to Mr. Dames. The state has failed to prove that Mr. Dames had no objective, 
had no objectively reasonable basis to use deadly force against Mr. Miller at any time during their fateful encounter. The state failed to show that, and security would showed Dames trying to get away from McMiller before resorting to a ballistic defense. In Florida, the burden of proof is on the prosecution to show the defender didn't have a reasonable fear of injury or death. Citing video of the incident, Roby stated Dames is seen retreating from the multiple barrages of punches to the head and face until he falls to the ground several feet away. After shooting McMiller, Dame said he sat on the ground, took his Glock handgun apart, and sat on the ground with his concealed carry permit and waited for police to arrive. Dame's attorney blamed Fort Pierce police for ignoring mounds of evidence showing that the shooting was clearly justified, resulting in Dame's rotting behind bars for two years. This is exactly the type of situation that prompted Stand Your Ground laws. Stand Your Ground, which is a law in 25 states, permits to use the deadly force by an individual who has reasonable fear of death or grievous bodily harm whoever he or she may be, not only in the home. Standard ground laws have become a favorite target of the gun control industry. In this BradyUnited.org numb nuts, standard ground laws justify murder as millions of Americans demand such solutions to gun violence and racial injustice. Governor Mike DeWine needs to know the country's watching. We stand with Ohio to reject this legislation. He's an idiot. How did, does that not the way that guy defended himself not justify stand your ground it, it doesn't it, it justifies stand your ground 100 yeah. percent. and yeah. you know it, as much as i like stand your ground laws the 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 real thing that i think we need as a as an entire country is immunity from prosecution yeah in a clear self-defense case i mean this guy sat in jail for two years right and I don't know whether he had family that could afford the bond, they didn't have enough resources, maybe he doesn't have any family left. Right. I don't know his financial situation, but clearly he could not afford a competent attorney. Yeah. His district attorney was clearly incompetent. He's got a clear agenda. Well, this guy's got a clear, you know, civil suit oh, yeah, against, absolutely. against the prosecutor and the, and the police department. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we we need to stay away that it just shouldn't happen in something like this yeah it's just not and that's why i always say have have a competent attorney um you know have a self-defense insurance policy have you know a set of papers for instructions for your loved ones at home in case something happens uh, make some preparations if you fail to plan you plan to fail i mean yeah. it's just that simple yeah. <clears throat> In other news, don't steal rocket launchers from your military base and then get pulled over in a traffic stop. Uh, yes, that's a real lock rocket launcher. Rocket launcher stolen from Camp Pendleton, California was recovered during a routine traffic stop last Thursday in Liberty. The stop was initiated by PCT-2 Deputy Constable John Tucker in front of AutoZone in Liberty. The driver of the vehicle, a U.S. Marine with four months left to serve, reportedly told Tucker he was going to give the rocket launcher to his stepfather as a gift. Oh man, really? Uh, I guess your buying your old man a shotgun isn't good enough these days, Tucker told Blue Bond News. <clears throat> the vehicle was stopped for a minor speeding infraction just six miles over the speed limit. I walked up to the vehicle and I always say the same thing to people as I approach. I say, are you traveling with anything illegal like rocket launchers, hand grenades, or machine guns? The guy told me that he had a rocket launcher in the car, Tucker said. I thought he was joking, so I explained to him that I always say that to people when I approach the vehicles. He told me again he had a rocket launcher in the car. So the guy's honest. Seeing that the young man was serious, Tucker handcuffed and detained him while he searched the vehicle. In the back seat, he found an AT-4 anti-tank rocket launcher. <laughs> it was not decommissioned, meaning it still had the firing mechanism in place. However, there were no ordinances in the vehicle for the rocket launcher, so he didn't have any rockets for it. Tucker explained that he radioed, radioed for dispatchers to contact ATF, the federal agency that regulates Alcohol, tobacco, firearms, ATF asked Tucker to photograph everything, the driver, his license, and identifying information, and a rocket launcher. A few moments later, Tucker said the ATF notified him that 
Through a check with Fort Polk, it had discovered that the rocket launcher was stolen from Camp Pendleton. They told me to let him go. They didn't have anything on military equipment to hold on him. The feds will be taking over any investigation if there is one, Tucker said. I just don't understand how something like this made it off base without someone knowing about it. Yeah, really. Um, and it talks about he didn't know he was an American citizen on paper, but he was an active Marine. <clears throat> uh, for now, the constable's office has the rocket launcher under lock and key while the decision is made where it will be sent. The constable's office displayed the item at Tuesday night's National Night Out event in Daisy Etta. People from the community were interested to see the rocket launcher up close. People were amazed that something like that was just rolling down the highway in Liberty County. It goes to show you that a traffic stop, even one just six miles over the speed limit, can lead to something more, not always just the stop. It's what it can lead to, he said. Um, why don't they just take it back to Camp Pendleton? I don't know. I mean, was it stolen or was it? I think these Somebody are doesn't want to know where it went. Right? <laughs> I mean. Because somebody's going to have their head in a vice. Right? I'm sure the guy's going to be in trouble with the military, but well, yeah. I would bet there's no criminal charges that they can do to him because he's got no. It's just a there's metal no tube. Ordinance is there's no tube. ordinance. You yeah. can't get any ordinance for it or anything like that. So, right. I mean, <laughs> don't it's steal a rocket. <laughs> don't steal rocket launchers from your local military base. They're probably going to be upset when they find out you have one of their rocket launchers. <laughs> I'm no kidding. <laughs> The other thing that we got, something pretty close here, um, and this is from the Amsterdam Police Department. They uh, they did a, like a fishing expedition for pedophiles online, and they got four or five of them. And uh, the Carroll County Sheriff's Office um, decided to, to chase down one of them that was in Carroll County. Um, this guy, Jason Clark, 31 of Malvern, met with decoys tonight. He thought were underage and was taken into custody by Carroll County deputies and Amsterdam police officers for a warrant stemming from alleged sex crimes. As always, this wouldn't have been possible if not for the outstanding efforts of law enforcement in our area. So, um, even the smallest of police departments will do these fishing expeditions for mm -hmm. these pedophiles. And they got some off the street and that's where they deserve to stay. Yes. Put them in the Crowbar Hotel so that we don't Get have to up. deal with them in the future. Anyway, product of the week. <clears throat> we got a really cool new product. Um, we just got signed up with these a couple weeks ago. We got our first order in. Been promoting it on our Facebook page. Uh, these are really nice. Uh, I think I'm going to be having a set for myself. I will guarantee that. Um, Georgia Boot. These are a uh, parent company for Rockies too, aren't they? Um, I think Rockies the parent company for Georgia, but I don't okay. know which way it goes. But anyway, really high quality work boots. Um, you can get them in a composite or steel toe. Um, you can also get them in, in aluminum. Yeah. Um, I, I, you're just going to have to come in and check these out. These are really high quality. All sewn. There's no glued on pieces on the, on these. And uh, you know, it says easy fit, safety toe. Um, comes with memory foam insoles. Memory foam insoles. How many shoes are you gonna buy? It's got memory foam insole in it. This particular model's got yeah. the got the rubber toe cap yeah. for uh, all you farmers, well drillers, mechanics, anybody who's dragging their toes or kicking stuff a lot. I use these almost exclusively at work, and and they do work. They last a long time. Um, what I like about this particular model with the toe cap is the toe is composite. Everybody out there who wears steel toes realizes that in the winter time, once the steel in your boot gets cold, your toes freeze and you have to figure out a way to get it warmed back up. Well, the composite doesn't do that to your toes. So, um, metal buckles, steel hardware, um, yeah, they're just eight inch awesome. boot. This, this is an eight inch model. I think you yeah. got a six inch this model. This is a six here. inch model, a little bit different style. But still, same high quality, little little bit different sole. Um, 
This is a composite toe or a steel toe on this one. So pull it up. You can you can drop you know 25 pounds on it and it wouldn't wouldn't hurt you. So and uh, this is a six inch boot. Sole pretty aggressive anyway. Um, but not super aggressive, so it picks up a lot of mud and crap and stuff. You track all in your house and all that. But uh, I think uh, same thing. I think all of them are slip and oil yeah. resistant. Yep, slip and oil resistant. Um, same thing. They all come with the memory foam, gel insole, and either really nice boots. Yep. Pricey, but you get what you pay for a boot like that, though. Really not bad. I think no. I think these ones are 178 bucks, and these ones are about 135, 135 bucks, something like that. Right. Um, but for the quality, uh, made in the USA, you can't go wrong. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Steel grommets for all the shoestrings. You know, normally they're all plastic. You know. You can, you can either buy five pair of Walmart boots for a, for a year, or one pair of these for two years. Yeah. So I know the pair I've had been a couple years and yeah, pretty good. Yep. So that's what we got for you guys tonight. Um, yeah, Victor Rothman, Netflix documentary called Social Dilemma about Facebook and Google. Um, I have watched that documentary. Um, there's another one um, on Netflix, and it talks. It's got a bunch of CEOs, and they have uh, Twitter and um, Google and Facebook and different things. And it it actually goes into how they actually used um, psychologists and and you know. Uh, I don't know the medical term for the people who understand how the brain works. Um, yeah. And behavioral science experts. Yeah. On how and conditioning. To actually condition and make it so that you, your structure, your mind, your your the the media platform makes you. They they have figured out how to make you addicted to it, and you don't mm -hmm. even understand that that's happening. Yep. So there's there's a lot of stuff um, out there that's really coming to light through the uh, different things that you know are, are going on. So yeah, just uh, be careful out there. So that's what we got for you guys tonight. As always, um, oh, I missed Mr. Del Bracco. Good evening, Dean. Um, Not trying to exclude you here. I missed your comment. I didn't even see him on there. He's on YouTube. Oh, he's on YouTube. <coughs> Normally he's on Facebook and he switched yeah, over to YouTube. And I was looking for Dino, but uh, throw us a curveball there. Anyway. Um, the uh, yes, amazing what we're up against from social media. It's absolutely mind-boggling what they try. In any event, um, this is what we got for you. Um, real quick, um, back pistol ranges the club is is open. Front pistol range is closed. We got a rocketeering weekend for the scouts and family camp out. That's where I'm going to go tonight. So I got to get to sleep in a hammock tonight. Oh, lucky you. Um, I I was actually considering just taking the camper, hooking on the camper and taking it down there and firing up the furnace on my TV and the yeah. PlayStation and just sitting. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the worst problem with that was your youngest daughter would have had a hissy fit. Oh yeah, it was, so. it sat there with the with the uh, awning out underneath yeah. the uh, yeah. furnace yeah. <laughs> when yeah. she's sleeping in the tent. Oh yeah, right. So anyway. Um, Rimfire thing. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes, Victor Roth. Rimfire thing. It's a Rimfire sniper shoot. It is like a miniature precision rifle competition. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what goes into the stages. Yeah. Um, we haven't made it yet. Because <laughs> yeah, one we haven't we haven't set it up yet. Two, we don't let it out before it happens. But you may be shooting from standing, sitting, or prone, or maybe not. 
Uh, you can use any rim fire, you can use any optic, you can use any barrel length weight trigger, yeah. doesn't yeah. matter, uh, bipods, pretty much anything. The only thing you're not allowed to use is a bolted down steady rest, and the only reason you can't use that is because you're not going to get through the stages with it. Yeah, you have um, to carry your gun to a different stages. Mm -hmm. so. so you might be shooting over a dirt mound, you might be shooting through brush over a table, yeah. under a table, standing. You might be um, shooting a target this big or that big. Yep. Yeah. The the targets range from 10 to 70 yards. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you don't know what the distance is. Um, you can judge the size of the target. You can go out on a range and measure the target if you want to, um, to figure out how you're going to hit it. But being that we keep it inside 70 yards and a rim fire thing um you gotta gotta figure out your drops and it is it is an absolute riot and just like most club events uh normally just as much bullshit flies as lead does so um just be yeah. aware of that uh it is it is also kid friendly so if yeah. you got kids uh bring them along um they shoot just like the the big guys do um we find a lot of times at these events, a lot of, some of the kids will out shoot grandpa and dad and mom. Yeah. Um, so, but they have a riot at it. Anyway, um, yeah. Anything else? We uh, we That's will be I here. Like Send us a message on Facebook. Shoot us an email. Um, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> Everything's right there in front of you. So you guys have a good weekend, and we will see you hopefully next right here next week. And uh, stay safe, guys. Hopefully you uh, have some fun.